basketball moves from the campus to the city. And under the bright lights, BYU's Lee Kamard hopes to keep on shining. Kamard for three, got it. Kamard with the steal, he scores, he draws the foul. The Utah State Aggies have a bright spot of their own as sophomore Ty Wesley has gotten off to a sparkling start. Both teams are undefeated. Something has to give. Get ready, because in-state college basketball is coming at you. It's an unseasonably warm December night here in Salt Lake City. Energy Solutions Arena ablaze in light for a huge college matchup. About 90 minutes ago, Lee Kamard of the BYU Cougars entered this building looking to knock the Utah State Aggies, their nemesis, out of the ranks of the unbeaten. Gary Wilkinson and Ty Wesley will have something to say about that. The Aggie faithful have made the trip 90 miles south from Logan, and they call this building, at least for tonight, the Spectrum on Wheels. It's the Cougars at 7-0 and the Aggies at 5-0, and you're going to get an opportunity to have a front row seat. Hi, everybody. Steve Brown along with Andy Toulson. Andy, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Two unbeaten teams, two teams that know each other very well. One is going to go down tonight, and they're going to do it on the biggest stage the state has to offer, the home of their NBA franchise. You're right. It really should be a fun night in here. Both teams coming in undefeated, like you say. BYU has averaged about 24 points in a margin of victories in these first seven games. Utah State's crew pretty much don't expect to blow out tonight should be a great night let's talk about Utah State they have the Twin Towers the inside game Gary Wilkinson and Ty Wesley Wilkinson averaging almost 17 a game and Ty Wesley 13 a game seven rebounds but his game is much more than those numbers Andy Tolson well both these guys you know combined they average their uh, their shooting percentage about 77 percent which is really unbelievable the Aggies do a great job at finding Ty Wesley in positions on the floor where he can score easily as I said he's his shooting percentage is 77 percent you see him giving to the basket he likes to get to, to the free throw line as well draws contact with his shoulder really a leader leads his team in assist nice passer as well and for the BYU Cougars theirs is a perimeter game in the person of Lee Kamard among others he's not the only star but Lee Kamard a guy that talked about going to the NBA and I think everybody in Utah County and all Cougar faithful are glad he didn't averaging nearly 21 a game and he's shooting over 67 percent from the floor and his shots don't come from the inside well really unbelievable the numbers he's put up thus far Steve you know he was picked to be a Wooden Award candidate one of the top 50 players uh, preseason MVP of the Mountain West Conference here you see him doing it inside he can shoot from the perimeter as well really been a leader for this team and if he keeps doing what he's doing, no stop in the BYU Cougars. Well, it's going to be a good one. There's no question about it. And you've got two teams that are in-state rivals like this, and neither one of them has been bested so far. Someone is going to go down tonight here in this building, and you have the best seat in the house. So it's the Cougars against the Aggies. Who will prevail? We'll find out next. In-state basketball is coming at you. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today.
guess what? I'm getting an A in chemistry. I'm sure glad my boys take after their mother. <laughs> Your Uncle Frank is talking about selling off those 40 acres. Remember the treehouse we built there? It was a beauty. I hear Coach Larson's retiring. Yeah. And he was always good to you. Did I tell you Jason finally got a car? Oh, the streets will never be safe again. <laughs> he got that right. Paper says your team's playing pretty well. Yeah, five in a row. Maybe they'll make the playoffs this year. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I'm about ready for some dinner. We'll go inside so Mom can have a say. It smells like apple pie. It's just the way you like it, too. We'll save you a piece. Or not. Don't listen to them. I'll make you ten when you get home. No matter what you talk about, love is what they'll hear. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Utah State will collide. Steve Brown along with Andy Toulson, and it really is a, an Aggie crowd in terms of the volume in here. I think they've got more people in here than the Cougars do, but it is going to be a, a noisy one, to say the least, as we take a look at tonight's starting lineups. Here's a look at Dave Ru Rose and the BYU Cougars. This is the starting five for BYU. We talked about Lee Kamar, Jackson Emery. He can bury the outside shot. So can Jimmer for a debt. You got Tavernari, the Brazilian, had some problems with his shooting percentage, but not with the frequency. He's more than happy to put it up and the big man in the middle Chris Miles Dave Rose the head coach for season with the Cougars done an outstanding job with his BYU program on the other side of the ledger the Utah State Aggies and they come in with that starting lineup it's all too familiar by now Jared Quayle Tyler Newbold in there Jackson Meyer the freshman and Ty Wesley and Gary Wilkinson the inside presence that we've talked about for Stu Morrill who uh, was an inside presence himself one of the big men he's in, in his 11th season with the Aggies and this is a guy who just does one thing and that's simply win. Our officiating crew tonight it's a veteran crew it, and it's Randy McCall Larry Spaulding and Michael Irving and Larry Spaulding will get us underway as Wilkinson steals the tip for the dark blue clad Aggies trimmed in white, BYU white trimmed in the dark blue. And there's a look at our officiating crew tonight. And we are underway from Energy Solutions Arena. Look for Utah State to go inside early. That is their bread and butter. And they go right down on the block to Wilkinson. He spins in and we've got contact right away with Miles. And that was something that you wondered about, Andy Toulson. How would the uh, big men of Utah State fare against the bigger challenge of BYU? Well, you know, Chris Miles has really done a nice job thus far in the season of staying out of foul trouble. Aggies go right at him, draw a foul early on. You know, tonight's going to be an interesting matchup because Utah State relies so heavily upon uh, Wilkinson and uh, Ty Wesley inside. That's their bread and butter, along with Tyler Newbold. BYU is a little more perimeter oriented. They get their offense from the perimeter guys. Kamard, Tavernari, Jackson Emery, and Jimmer Fredette. Wilkinson just one of two from the free throw line, but the Aggies drop first one. Fredette brings it into forecourt and full court defensive pressure by Utah State, broken by BYU, and Kamard will try and get to the rim. He does, and he's going to have an opportunity for a three-point play. Well, he started just like he left off the other night, 12 for 13 against Weber State, 30 points. Nice move by Lee Kamard. Kamard goes to the free throw line after this move, and you Tyler, see he uses that little elbow to get around the corner and get leverage. Yeah, Tyler Newbold was trailing on the... Uh, the down screen. Lee just got a step. Beat him to the basket with the left hand. Finishes the three-point play. So now Utah State does a lot of cross screens and back screens for their big men. Always looking inside to Wesley and Wilkinson. Meyer to Quayle on the bounce pass low to Wesley. The double team comes over. Miles and Wesley just beats it. Yeah, Jonathan Tavernari's got to get over there and cut him off on the baseline. The double team came from the top side. All tied up at three. Fredette the catch and shoot for three, and he finds the bottom of the net. That was an NBA three. Jimmer Fredette from deep. Neither one of these two teams uh, short in the offensive department. BYU will come down, and they don't worry much about taking it deep into the shot clock. They'll just catch and shoot on opportunity. Aggie outside shot is off the mark, but Wilkinson there to clear the glass. And he's fouled inside. And that foul is called 
on number four, Jackson Emery for BYU. Team foul number two, and Wilkinson will go to the free throw line again for Utah State. Dave Rose talking to Randy McCall here on the sideline. Trying to let him know that Chris Miles was straight up. They actually didn't call the foul on Chris Miles. They got Jackson Emery underneath. Miles got lucky because he could have had two quick ones on him. There was contact underneath. Wilkinson this time buries both free throws. 6-5 Cougar lead early here in the Energy Solutions Arena. Utah State in that matchup zone now. Kind of a 1-2-2 matchup. Another three and another three finding the mark by Jimmer for death. That's well, he's got a stroke going early and that's not good news for the Aggies. You got to get up and challenge that shot and give him that kind of separation. He'll hurt you when he's on and that stroke is obviously on early. That's a good way to get him out of that zone defense. Step up and knock down the three. Meyer under pressure at midcourt from Fredette. Cougar faithful make a noise now under the east basket as Quayle goes to the rim and the shot is blocked. Here comes BYU. They've got numbers. Fredette, another three. This one's off the mark, and Wilkinson runs down the rebound. Both teams showing the tendency to shoot that outside shot, but especially BYU, and they make a living off that. Well, they shoot a very high percentage. Dave Rose does not mind his team taking those shots. Ty Wesley. And Newbold down low to Wilkinson. The double team help comes over and Tavernali knocks it away. And BYU has the turnover. Cougars with a 9 5 lead. Dave Rose exhorting his team to run, push it up, get early offense. End to end basketball. Inside, Wesley draws the double team to Meyer for three. And he gets it. A 9 8 Cougar lead. Yeah, it looks like BYU is going to double team anytime Wilkinson or Ty Wesley receive the ball down on the block. The Aggie uh, perimeter shooters can step up and hit those, really help them. Fredette, his shot partially blocked, and the Aggies with a rebound will look to run. The Cougars get back. Wilkinson, here comes the double team. Wilkinson waited and passed out of it, but the ball knocked out of bounds by Jackson Emery. It'll be Utah State basketball with 21 on the shot clock. Yeah, nice job getting down, Jackson Emery. See, every time that the uh, big men for Utah State receive the ball on the block, they're going to double team. That guard's got to get in there quickly. Here's Wesley shooting over the big men of BYU, but the shot off the mark. Miles works on Wesley. Puts a shoulder in, has the ball knocked away. Miles thought he got fouled, looked for a little help from Michael Irving, the referee, who just shook his head. Yeah, Chris Miles needs to continue over that left shoulder, get into the middle of the lane. Wesley had it lane to the basket for a moment as Tavernari overplayed the pass, but recovered. Now Meyer will bring it back out again. From the corner, shot is off the mark. Wilkinson runs down the offensive rebound and then throws the ball away as Miles got a hand on that pass. Tavernari pulls up for the jump shot. The Brazilian again continues to struggle as Camard can't find a handle on the rebound. Has it taken away right in front of that Utah State crowd. And it looks like a contact lens has come out for Ty Wesley. And with that, we get our whistle for a timeout. 15-19 remaining first half. It's end-to-end -end basketball that has the Cougars with a one-point lead. After we beat the Utes at the Huntsman Center, was uh, chucking the basketball into the student section up there. And I figured, you know, they were giving my teammates uh, a lot of grief during the game. I'll give them a little souvenir for the road. But uh, we had a little help in the first first freshman year. And I think after that year, we kind of learned that we can be good and, and play against anybody, especially at home. But last year, we were, we were just a good team. And uh, we knew we could win there. 
and we play with a lot more confidence. Um, next year, it'll definitely have to be a, a leadership role. I'll uh, uh, be the oldest guy on the team, I believe. But, uh, you know, they'll look for, for, for me to score and make big plays, but also look for me for leadership defense. Yeah, he, he came to every game last year. Uh, Sarah says he watches it go back and forth and, and never really complains or gets a fussy. Oh, someday when his dad's playing, he'll have to uh, let the ref know he made a bad call and probably bring a tear to my eye that day. I liked Ole 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 when they when uh, Fernando was here. I, I don't like it so much when JT's here. It gives him a little too much confidence. Uh, it makes him want to shoot too much. game brought to us by the Larry H. Miller dealerships after all you know this guy so let's first of all talk about the Cougars defending the screens especially inside right Andy Toulson yeah the Aggies do a great job of setting those cross screens for uh, Ty Wesley Gary Wilkinson also BYU wants to push the ball up in transition every time they get a defensive reader they want to push it up try to get an easy basket Keys, keys for Utah State they want to stop that BYU transition pick up the uh, point guard early and also limit the touches for Lee Kamar. They've really focused on that early on. And it leaves one for one, but that'll be a key for the Aggies. Ty Wesley looks like he's got his contact situation squared away. Neither team shooting very well right now. BYU three of eight, shooting 37.5%. Utah State two of six for 33%. Wilkinson's jump hook inside is good, and it gives the Aggies a one-point lead at 10 to nine. Well, that's exactly what the Aggies want to do. Get the ball to Gary Wilkinson right in the middle of the paint. Utah State, a couple of substitutions at that whistle. Matt Formasano out of Centennial, Colorado, is in the game as Kamar hits a deep three. And also coming in for Utah State, number 12, Jeremy Geiger. He's got the basketball now and crosses into full court. Yeah, Lee Kamar with a nice three on the other end. Tyler Newbold right in his face. Wilkinson shot his challenge, but there's a foul, and that foul I think is going to go against Anderson, who's into the BYU lineup. That's James Anderson. You know, that time BYU electing just to stay one-on-one, -on -one, man on man, not doubling down with the other big man. So Wilkinson at the free throw line, where he has been already tonight on four previous occasions. And a reminder, Jazz fans, that the Utah Jazz are back in action taking on Shaquille O'Neal and the Phoenix Suns. That's tonight. You can catch all the action right after this game on FSN Utah. Be sure to tune in when this one is over. All tied at 12 after the free throws. Devernari pulls the trigger from three, and it's off the mark again. And Williams with the rebound for Utah State. Savon Williams also came in at that last whistle, the junior out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ball picked up by BYU and still on the floor available. Jackson Emery wide open. A great hustle, Jonathan Tavernari knocked it away, got loose, dove on the floor, got it over to Jimmy Fredette who found Jackson for the easy dunk. The tempo of this game, high-pitched as we ex expected it to be, just the same as the audience. A frenetic pace being set by both teams right now, and we didn't expect anything else. Larry Spaulding with a whistle and a knee as a defensive foul, and this is a look at the dunk a moment ago. Yeah, Tavernari get on the floor, found Fredette in the corner, who found Emery. Jackson Emery just back from a mission about seven months in Mexico got pretty good hops And BYU with a lead of 14 to 12 So Wesley is back in and Wilkinson goes out Big men for Utah State add to that mix Matt for Masano you know, The Aggies early on having a lot of success just getting the ball right where they want it inside to Gary Wilkinson Utah State will back it out. Geiger to Williams, and now Ty Wesley and Pooh Williams into the game now with the basketball for the Aggies. 
Both benches extremely deep and both coaches more than willing to use the manpower they have. Wesley backs in. Miles got a hand on the ball. Now they reset to Wesley again, fighting off the double team, and Miles blocks him. But Williams scoops it up and scores. Pooh Williams alertly picking up the loose basketball. And it is getting physical in there. Yeah, a lot of emotion here. Chris Miles playing good position defense. And Rose is into the BYU lineup. That's Archie Rose. We saw him for the first time on the season against Weber State the other night. The quick catch and shoot and a three-point basket by Jimmer Fredette, who has his stroke goal tonight. Jimmer Fredette, three of five from the field. All three of the makes coming from three-point range. And Chris Miles did a nice job of finding him coming around the pick. And Miles comes out and commits the personal foul. No, it's Emery. It's going to go against number four, Jackson Emery. Thought Larry Spaulding would whistle that on Miles as he jumped the screen, but it's going to go against Emory, I believe. And coming in, though, is McGregor for BYU. Also into that BYU lineup now is Lamont Morgan Jr., the junior out of Pomona, California. Three-point shooting, four of seven for BYU. Aggies just one of three. And that's why BYU doesn't mind taking a lot of those three-pointers. They're good shooters. Williams three is off the mark. Fredette to the rim and scores. What a move, Jimmy Fredette coming across the lane. The scoop up off the glass. And that last foul did go to Miles, Andy Toulson. So he has two, and that's the reason he's sitting. McGregor is in for BYU. Well, both these big guys for BYU, Miles and McGregor, pretty good defenders. Wesley spinning off the glass and scoring. Yeah, Jonathan Tavernari's got to do a better job of just cutting Ty Wesley off the baseline. Jeremy Geiger whistled for a personal foul, but Jimmer Fredette is lighting things up for BYU. He leads all scorers with 11. Fredette coming down, takes it right to the rim, so he'll go inside or out. The net result, a Cougar three-point lead. at BYU, you know, fit my style, obviously, with, you know, no partying and type, type, type of stuff like that that I'm used to. And, you know, coming out here was a good change for me to be able to come out here and be able to be with people that are, have the same beliefs as I do. The academics here are very tough, you know. They, uh, they really expect a lot out of you. I'm trying to get into the business school right now, so I'm taking the prerequisite classes for that. And the mountains just, you know, were unbelievable just to see all the mountains and how tall they were. We have some mountains back where I am, but it's absolutely nothing like these. You're, you're right next to them. I've had two Book of Mormon classes. I really enjoyed those, and I really enjoyed uh, my mission prep class with uh, Randy Bott. I think that I've benefited, you know, in every way, just, you know, spiritually, you know, becoming a better basketball player, becoming more physically fit with our trainer and, uh, you know, becoming smarter, trying to get, you know, those academics done. And I, th I think I've benefited in a whole bunch of ways just because, you know, BYU expects it out of you and it expe expects you to become a better person. Knowing that BYU is a very good school now, you know, basketball-wise is, uh, is definitely a big thing for a, a player to want to come here. And obviously, the, you know, the life, the social life and everything is, you know, if they're looking for this type of environment, then this is the place to come. In the first half, from Energy Solutions Arena, two unbeaten college teams in the state of Utah battling it out right now. And BYU has been, uh, well, they've been shooting lights out from three-point range in the early going. They're four of seven for 57% and 53.8% overall from the field. Utah State is just one of four beyond the arc and 45.5% from the field. So BYU not surprising anybody. They're a good shooting basketball team, and they're not afraid to take that outside shot. The question for Utah State is can they somehow uh, defend that perimeter and cool them down a little from the outside and make them go inside? Well, Jimmer Fredette stepping up early, knocking down three threes. Interesting, too, because the dark three-point line, of course, is the NBA three-point line on the floor. The white one is the college, and I'm not sure that uh, the guys 
aren't looking at that lane and that line as the three-point line you probably got another foot and a half to two feet you could go in but I guess it doesn't really matter as long as you're making them most of the threes we've seen tonight have been NBA threes yeah, Gavin McGregor with a nice offensive rebound on the other end found a cutting Jonathan Tabernari and a foul is called an offensive foul call on Tom Wesley there's Dave Rose, BYU coach. Tabernari on the other end, you were talking about. Gavin it. McGregor finding Jonathan Tabernari cut to the basket. And if I'm Dave Rose, based on Tabernari shooting, that's where I want him to shoot because his outside shot just has not been falling. Well, one thing about Jonathan Tabernari, he will continue to put him up as you speak. And this time he hits it. The three pointer by the Brazilian from the corner. And that's the thing, he can miss five or six in a row and still believe he's going to hit the next five or six. Shooter's mentality, you know it all too well, Hedy Tolson, right? you got to believe. You can't let a few misses stop you. And Tavernari, the attempted steal, but it's picked back up by Utah State. But a 24-16 lead right now for the BYU Cougars as Randy McCall will call a halt to things for a moment, and I believe it's a clock situation. I think he wants to make sure that shot clock is correct. And now it's gone to 24, which, of course, is the NBA shot clock. It was at 33 a moment ago. So there was no change of possession, and therefore there is no new shot clock, and it reverts back to the 20. Now it's at 22 seconds remaining on the original shot clock. So the ball was knocked away in the, uh, in the eyes of the official, but not establishing uh, any kind of, of possession. And looking inside now, Utah State's Williams. Meyer, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wilkinson will put it on the floor against BYU defender McGregor. Inside position by Wesley on the offensive rebound. Not much room to move. BYU doing a good job inside with the big man. Here comes the help over on Wilkinson, but it got there late. And Kamard couldn't get over to help in time. And Wilkinson with the easy shot off the basket. Nice little soft one off the glass for the basket for Utah State. Yeah, I think the BYU defenders got a little confused. You can't leave Wilkinson alone on the block there. There's McGregor backing in. Goes to the left hand and he scores. Nice little move over the right shoulder. Gavin McGregor. McGregor with his first two of the night. And it's 26-18 BYU. Who Williams inside to Ty Wesley. Here comes the double team. That pass, entry pass, toughest pass in basketball. But it's got to get there much quicker because it allowed too much time for the help. This is what BYU wants in transition. Well, the pass was low. You got to know your customers, as Mark Eaton used to tell me. Don't hit us seven footers down at the kneecaps with a pass. <laughs> Locked out of bounds, and the Cougar faithful lover. New bowl coming in for Ty Wesley. Here's a look at that last play, and there's the drive and the block yeah, as Tavernari gets over. Poo Williams trying to drive baseline. Kamar got pretty good position. Tavernari came over and sent it out of bounds. Formasano is into the Utah State lineup. Fredette is going to get a breather for Dave Rose's Cougars. Newbold's also into that Aggie lineup again. Blocks 2-0, BYU. Steve, I tell you what, there's nothing like college basketball atmosphere. We've got it here tonight. Wilkinson hangs and he's fouled as he goes inside. McGregor will be tagged with a personal foul. You know, this is reminiscent of the old in-state basketball days before the facilities got so sanitized that you just didn't get the kind of excitement that you used to get. Here on a neutral floor tonight, uh, you've got that old feeling again. We've got one side with Aggies, the other side with Cougars, and in between with, with uh, supporters from the community. Wilkinson must have a little blood on him. They're going to wipe that off. Looks like he's going to actually, uh, the old toilet tissue in the nose routine. And Gary Wilkinson ready to go at it again. Well, the, the acoustics in here, Steve, are such that uh, just reverberates, and it's fun to hear out on one side and then on the other. Great crowd tonight. Probably over 17,000 in this building. And Wilkinson now apparently has the blood problem solved. Yeah, I said it was a near sellout. Holds 19,900 and change. 
And they'll wipe the blood off the floor before Gary Wilkinson will toe the free throw line. I guess this game was kind of a negotiated solution.